yeah i really just wanted <laughs> to build the circuit on uh you know a circuit i designed on uh <clears throat> Perf board, but then things got a little bit out of hand, and uh, yeah, during the course of the video, um, you will see why. So, let's build that thing. Um, I hopefully got all the parts I need, and uh, yeah, I uh, put some wires on the transformer tabs, uh, neutral, then the, well, you might remember the uh, tab on the lower voltage tab and uh, black is the higher voltage tab, which we don't use at the moment. So uh, we can put that safely away where it doesn't make a short to anything. And yeah, um, let's start with the relay. Huh? Uh, that's simple. Okay, I put in some more components and then we <laughs> start to play. So far I haven't done much. I will do it step by step and show you the functionality and test it each step. Um, so uh, yeah, our um, AC neutral and our lower coil go into a, uh, it's hidden by the big cap here. And um, yeah, as a short update, if I can find it because they were so cheap, 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 cheap. Huh. I went with uh, 1,500 microfarad, 35 volts. I know I said 50, but uh, yeah, our absolute maximum peak voltage here is 33.4. Uh, even if there's absolutely no load, so we only drop uh, on the rectifier 1.2 volts, it will go up to 33.6 volts. Absolutely worst case. So. 35 volts should be okay and uh, as I said they were nice and cheap and um, yeah uh, anyway hidden by it is a little bridge rectifier in a big case it's uh, actually it's a DB 105 TB so uh, yeah I have to correct that too so we're using here a uh, DB105 DB and what's not here uh, on the schematic is uh, I actually um, connected uh, well, I actually connected uh, put the output of the relay um, to the positive rail and uh, these two I uh, put some LEDs with uh, 1.5K resistors, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, and of course I already uh, connected the coil to negative. So if I put now some voltage on the coil from my positive rail, which I have, uh, yeah, you might have guessed uh, at the top negative rail is at the bottom we are at 30.72 volts if I put that uh, on then oh we can switch the relay I thought it nice to actually see when it's switching I mean you can probably hear it That's some decisive switching action, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, they're good relays. Um, okay, uh, I think um, I've 
needs a protection dial now and uh, I will build uh, basically only yeah the transistor driver for the relay including uh, the protection diode and that 390k resistor so we can uh, check what the voltage drop actual voltage drop uh, across the transistor is if that 390k is uh, really low enough to uh, switch that fully on for the required 23 milliamps here. So as I said I put everything in. Uh, let me zoom a little bit. Yeah the, the 20 is hiding here behind the cable so um, yeah that's our protection diode uh i'm zooming out again sorry uh that's our protection diode going uh reverse bias to the ground this is our uh 390 so 390k resistor going from the base uh to the ground and um I also pulled this point here at the moment simply with a cable to the positive rail high. So yeah, we are still in the off state. And uh, yeah, of course the emitter is uh, connected to the positive rail. So, and if I now take the base low then Ooh. okay nothing new but at least it's working uh, the interesting thing is here now um first what's uh the voltage drop across the transistor when we are actually switching that is does it get enough base current so uh, I put it between positive and the collector. Mm, mm, that's this one here. So of course in the off state we have uh, 30.71 volts. And uh, yeah, I'm currently displaying volts uh, effective, but uh, yeah, we could just volts. So 30.6 volts. And if I switch the tranny on, we have a drop of 0.31 five volts over the transistor 0.306 okay um yeah uh quick look into the data sheet uh let's see uh collect the current base emitter voltage what I'm collector, I'm using saturation and on voltages. So, um, yeah, that's that curve here. Uh, what saturation voltage we could. Uh, I noticed I read the diagram not correctly. Uh, so, this is a uh, far collector emitter saturation at e collector over e base being 10 uh, but we are driving 20 milliamps with uh, 58 microamps uh, or 0 0.1 milliamps so we are more in the region of 200 here and um, yeah then these curves apply. So we are here at a collector current of about 20 milliamps and 
Yeah, you see where the collector emitter voltages are. Officially, yeah, that's, we would have to provide, uh, that's in milliamps, so yeah, we're about here in the curve, so 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts, yeah, right in the knee. Yeah, we are providing, yeah, um, a little bit less, more here, and uh, yeah, but with, uh, yeah, the 0 0.3 volts, 0 0.0.2, 0 0.3 volts, we are still right here in the knee of the curve. Yeah, if you uh, provide a lot of, lots more current to the base, uh, uh, yeah, your gain is going down and uh, yeah, you basically cannot decrease the uh, collector emitter voltage anymore. If you uh, provide much more base, uh, much less base current, uh, then we would, yeah, go up here and uh, yeah, would burn actually uh, some power in the transistor itself. That is, uh, create some voltage drop in the transistor. But we, we are here uh, at 0.3, so here, so uh, exactly at the knee, exactly uh, what you expect at the beta, so uh, 0.3 volts is perfectly okay. That was spot on in fact. Next thing would be to build in this resistor and uh, yeah, without the feedback, but with a 180K and uh, yeah, something shorting the whole shebang to ground or something like that. Just a sec. So uh, I put in the second uh, transistor and supporting stuff. Let's zoom in. Yeah, you can see it behind the cables. But uh, basically, um, it's a collector. Yeah, it's okay. Zooming out. That's, that's all good. It's a uh, collector is now going over uh, to the base point. Yeah, that was the line we manually uh, put high or low when playing with that part and uh, yeah its base is directly connected uh, to the positive rail with a 180k and uh, on the other side it goes down through a, a 3.3 meg resistor and a 2 meg oh, isn't that a cute little pot uh, and a 2 meg pot um, to our sense line, so to this part here, uh, which I connected uh, at the moment to ground, so our relay is off. Yeah, we, um, connecting that to ground means zero volts. Yeah, at this point. And uh, if you look at the circuit, if this goes open, yeah. If this goes open, that transistor goes off and our relay should switch because, yeah, where should the base current go if that is open? So if I pull our sense line from the ground rail, yeah, nice. Now, um, <clears throat> So far we haven't achieved that much, uh, but uh, kept two transistors busy to uh, switch a relay. Um, yeah, I guess uh, it's time to get out the big guns, that is a voltage source to uh, feed actually our uh, sense line. and. Uh, so we can actually uh, sweep the voltage here at that point up and down. Yeah, give me a sec. 
So slightly different perspective. I have here my, uh, oh, look at that power indicator, uh, my uh, revamped uh, <laughs> first ever built power supply uh, link there. And uh, I connected that to our ground rail and to our sense line. It's currently at zero volts. I'm measuring actually the uh, the voltage between our sense line, uh, sorry, our power t uh, positive rail and our sense line, which is uh, since I'm putting out here zero volts, um, exactly our the voltage at our yeah positive rail, and. Uh, yeah, I could turn that little trimmer here a wee bit uh, to one extreme value. Yeah, actually now it's on maximum value. I hope it is. And now we can turn up the voltage. As I turn up the voltage here, the voltage difference, yeah, we are talking about, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and I uh, drawn in that connection, yeah, a uh, little babbling. Uh, as we turn up the power here, uh, this, our voltage differential here, the voltage drop is decreasing at, at some point. Uh, it's so low that our transistor should switch off. Okay, speed things up a little bit. It was design 18 volts we got in our Excel simulation in the last part, uh, a little bit different value. You saw that? You hear the relay is. Trying. The relay is trying to switch and uh, the thing about these kinds of circuits is, of course, uh, as soon as you are here at ex around about 0.6 volts, and I haven't put the feedback resistor in yet, uh, you're in the nether region, so uh, neither fully off nor fully on, so our relay... Uh, <laughs> has a problem deciding uh, should it switch on, should it switch off, because uh, we are not really uh, providing the necessary current. Uh, this will all change with uh, the feedback resistor coming in, but uh, I just wanted to see without the feedback resistor if our design values, yeah, <laughs> you remember I calculated that in the last part without thinking about the feedback. Uh, if that's okay. And uh, currently I'm at 18 volts, 17.7. Uh, let me find a piece of paper and jot that down. And now We go back here to near zero and uh, I put the trimmer to this should be basically nothing, zero ohms. And now we see when it's switching. Okay, voltage difference as I raise the voltage here, voltage differential is going down on our voltage divider. Yeah, we switched here the last time, not this time. OK, 
Okay, now something should happen. Ah, saw that. Okay, so fully on at 11.4. So if you look at these values, uh, 17.7 with trim max 2 mega ohms and 11.4 with trim 0. And uh, we look at our design values. was 13 to 18. Um, yeah. We're not that far off. We're not that far off. I mean, uh, yeah, I necessarily uh, plus two mega ohms. Um, yeah. I mean, I guessed the 0.6 and uh, it's not that bad. Now let's put the feedback resistor in and uh, see uh, how it behaves then. So yeah, that is, I put the feedback resistor in from, uh, sorry, uh, from the uh, collector that is, uh, yeah, the positive end of our relay or the collector of our driver transistor to the base of our, yeah, let's call it sense resistor. Let's see what's happened now. What's happening now? Uh, I turned the pot back into minimum, uh, maxim, maximum position. Yeah, maximum position. And yeah, last time it switched on at 17. So let's approach that slowly. Not switching, not switching, not switching. So not switching. Clack. And you see, this is a really a decisive switching action. So we switch on at sixteen point five, and if I go down. We're switching off at 16.8. Yeah, so this gives us a hysteresis of just uh, 300 millivolts. Uh, 16.6, 16.5, and then Point six, uh, sixteen five, sixteen six. Uh, yeah, this is let's say sixteen seven. So, uh, really, only a small hysteresis. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there comes an effect in that uh, the transistor is actually in its on state stabilizing, sorry, stabilizing the voltage here. Uh, because yeah, you have a fixed, mostly fixed drop around uh, the emitter base diode. So uh, even if the current here uh, changes, uh, this will try uh, to keep it at that minus 0.6 volt drop here. Um, yeah, but uh, 
let's try that was uh, with trim max 2 mag ohms okay turn the voltage here down and go up to or down to zero let's see what happens so So this shouldn't switch at 16, but at a much lower difference. It was 11.4 without the feedback. With the feedback, it's probably even less. Okay, here. Okay, I'd say 10 point, 10 point 8 it's switching. 10 point 8 and it's going off again. Yeah, we're already down at 10 point 6. Don't ask me why. Ah. So 10.9, yeah, 10.9, um, <laughs> so if you look at these numbers, our hysteresis is uh, far, far too little too small yeah so um, that ballpark uh, this was still ballpark 100 mega ohm feedback resistor uh, considering that there is yeah if this is on base current flowing um, is far too big I mean not far too big but uh, it is definitely too big so um yeah let's before we work out a better hysteresis um let's see uh what the voltage drop across that transistor is um just to make sure that uh yeah it's still fully on and fully off while we go here uh do our switching action so yeah, I'm measuring again uh, the voltage drop uh, across our switching transistor here. And uh, it's currently off, so uh, if we increase the voltage, it's doing now... Uh, you see, when I turn it... Yeah, in the nether regions, just around the switching point, uh, 0.4, it's still good, but uh, that really means that our, um, because it still changes here a little bit, that means that our, uh, I, continue that our sense transistor is not yet completely fully on and uh, that's also a sign that uh, our feedback our positive feedback is not enough so yeah now we can okay now we have yeah between 200 and 100 millivolts uh, hysteresis and I wanted one volt 
at least order of magnitude uh, <laughs> we could basically go down to 10 mega ohms uh, yeah oh let's be conservative and uh, first go down to 50 mega ohms and try that again okay i think i left the tremor in the uh, minimum position that's okay uh, as long as we are fooling around with the feedback sister uh, which is down now at uh, yeah as i said 50 mega ohms and i'm raising the voltage so our delta voltage goes down goes down and we expect something to happen at 10.8 okay so going slower 10.7 10 10.6 10 okay 10.3 oh up okay that was our switch point going up again and i can go up now okay Let's try this again. Eh, sorry. Ten one, ten oh, nine nine. Okay, let's say nine eight and it switches back at 9 9 10 10 1 10 2 10 3 10 4 okay 10 5 10 6 10 7 okay let's say 10 7 if we look at these numbers uh, you see that the on point this was uh, for the 100 mega ohm trimmed to zero and now I have 50 mega ohms sorry uh, trim still to zero um, the feedback resistor the positive feedback of course works in both directions uh, so it uh, basically is pulling the yeah it's moving the switch on point and it's moving the switch off point so kind of symmetrical um, yeah but uh, yeah that's a whopping 900 millivolts uh, yeah let's go for 25 mega ohms yeah I in advanced I bought everything 10 mega ohms 25 mega ohms 50 mega ohms 100 mega ohms so I yeah have a little spread let's go for 25 mega ohms okay I think I get it now um, yeah there are two candidates I have uh, currently in uh, sorry focus yeah uh, 50 mega ohm feedback resistor my I called it L1 is at 4.3 mega ohms and uh, yeah depending on the uh, setting of the pot I get uh, on voltage of 12.4 of 13.1 which gives me a hysteresis a delta of 1.2 volt and with the pot fully on it's 17.7 .7 and 19.6 volts of course which gives me a delta of 1.9 volts as uh, yeah I currently have the um, yeah you probably can't read the colors especially if it's not in focus <laughs> uh, yeah let's get the pot right down and then approaching 12 Point four volts, thirteen volts, 
five, four, clack. Okay, we switch over and uh, if our output voltage of our power supply falls again, it should switch back at 13.6. One, two, three, four, five, zack. Okay, so and yeah, you know the game. Pot on four. Let's go down and rise the voltage again to 19. Point. What was it? 17.7. 18. Seventy nine, seventy eight, seventy seven, clack. Okay. And back down at nineteen point six. So nineteen, nineteen, one, two, three, four, five, clack. I want to check do I nearly really need such a big capacitor here. So um, if we switch the relay on and measure the voltage across our positive and negative rail. Okay, so that's uh, Then it says I have a, okay, might take a while to settle down. So I have a 30.08 effective and a ripple of 140, 120, still settling. 90 millivolts. No, ah, that's absolutely 70 millivolts. Okay. I think it's settled on 70 mil 60 millivolts. Do I believe that? I don't know if I believe that. Fifty millivolts. Ripple. That's nothing with the relay on. Um, let's try that. Uh, that's not really helping, huh? Ripple voltage measuring. Uh, say what? Let's get the big guns out, huh? So yeah, <clears throat> the big guns. Um, so I have here uh, just AC coupled my ripple voltage between my positive and my negative rail. And it says... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you probably can't read this, but uh, this is 200 millivolts per division. And it says I have peak-to-peak -peak ripple voltage of about 280, 290, 300 millivolts with a relay coil on. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's not what I designed, is it? Uh, and if we switch the relay off, uh, the ripple voltage of course gets smaller, but it only goes down to 180, 170 millivolts. And something is wrong here. And what's wrong here is I have an additional 20 milliamps also flowing through the LEDs. So for the purpose of measuring the ripple voltage, I should probably put the LEDs off. And look there, no ripple. Okay, it says 60, 70, 80 millivolts, but uh, that's uh, because of, uh, yeah, all, I mean, you see how I connected my probes. That's all the noise it's fetching up. And uh, if we now switch the relay on, which I only be able to here, clack. Now we have a ripple of 
Yeah, 180, 170. Yeah, let's say 170 millivolts ripple. And uh, that says me I can make this capacitor without the LEDs driven by it. Uh, indeed a little bit smaller because um, I have now with these values uh, hysteresis of 1.2 volts or 1.9 volts so if I have uh, let's say uh, 300 or 400 millivolt ripple um, here on my positive rail, which is of course also rippling than the delta voltage here across my voltage divider. Um, that doesn't matter. So I wonder how small I can make that and uh, it's, yeah, that's me coupling in. <laughs> uh, I wonder how small I can make this capacitor without uh, blowing up the whole thing. That is, it won't blow up, but uh, it stopped ping to work. So I botched into 470 microfarads instead of that one big, uh, yeah, 1,500. And that uh, LEDs are off, uh, not powered, and this gives us with a relay of 88. It says 88 millivolts, but uh, probably less because, uh, you know, uh, it's basically flat even if I change the division down to 100 millivolts yeah 50 millivolts uh, this is basically noise it's flat it must be it must be flat because uh, as I said well we're, we're drawing here uh, 0.1 micrograms, 100 micrograms uh, currently at most. Uh, forget about that 50 mega ohms and these uh, 5, 6 mega ohms here. It's drawing nothing. That's the one that's drawing current in the off state. Um, so if I turn the relay on, and you have to believe me that I hear the click, I heard the click. Okay, and now we are actually at, yeah, even less than 300 millivolts, 370, 200, uh, sorry, 280, 290 millivolts with two 470 caps. So uh, one 1000 microfarad cap should be enough. Um, yeah, I, I was a little bit conservative, uh, and they were cheap, and you can, I think I can use them somewhere, bought two of them. Um, yeah, but the other problem is if the relay is off, turning down, okay, and uh, our DC voltage falls, that whole circuit might be a little bit slow in reacting. And uh, yeah, I don't know how to test that without a variac. Um, let me think about that. Our relay is currently now in the off state. That's that curve. Um, it's inverted, so if it's uh, at our positive rail voltage, yeah, then the relay is off. And if I now switch off the AC supply, it takes basically forever for my positive rail uh, to react because, I mean, it's clear. We're dis discharging that huge capacitor, which, by the way, is only 1,000 microfarads now, only through that 390k resistor. If the relay is on, now it's on, and I switch the AC off. 
bow. That's fast. And uh, the reason for that is <laughs> quite simple, because then we are discharging basically our capacitor through uh, 14,000 or 14K instead through 390K. I mean, uh, they are both in parallel, but uh, this is so much smaller, you can forget about that. Uh, we need a solution for that. So I thought about the problem and um, mm -hmm. um, one way would be uh, to use a, you know, a different rectifier or a, a staged rectifier uh, with probably no filtering here. I mean, uh, the uh, relay is just fine with a recti a recti full wave rectified. Um, yeah, and then maybe put in, uh, sorry, ah, it's crowded here. Uh, put in a diode here, forget about that, and uh, put just a small filter capacitor in here, for example. But um, that would mean between the on and off state here, you are still, uh, yeah, order of magnitude uh, between the on and off state uh, once drawing 86 microamps and uh, if that is off uh, just drawing the uh, meager yeah whatever here flows a few microamps through the feedback to the ground and stuff and you have the problem that uh, your feedback now would be <laughs> rectified <laughs> just rectified fine uh, sine wave and uh, you would have to filter that out because uh, yeah then your point here your base would simply go crazy and uh, yeah uh, complicated so the thing i came up with and i used the opportunity to uh, draw it wait i'm zooming in a little bit uh, yeah, so basically up to here, it's our, well, up to here, it's the uh, circuit we already have. Uh, so my sense transistor, my driver transistor, and uh, yeah, I've drawn uh, the resistors to the base of our sense resistor um, as proper voltage adder averager um, that's basically the same but then we can take this point here which goes high low high low and uh, put it again through a PNP transistor and uh, yeah the resistors are obviously or that resistor has obviously the same value as here because we are switching a load which is exactly the, no, not exactly but almost the same size as the relay the relay has 1.44 kilo ohms the relay coil and uh, we switch a resistor uh, with 1.5k and obviously if that is on this point here is high, so this transistor will be off, no current flowing. If the relay is off, this is basically going through the 1.44k to ground, so yeah, current can flow through the base and this resistor is on. So, uh, independently from uh, the relay on or off we draw the same current out of our 
filter cap and that means um, if we are in the relay off state yeah, and uh, we have seen it takes forever until the uh, our positive rail reacts to a change of the AC input. Uh, independent from that, if the relay is off, we are drawing the current through the resistor and our, yeah, our positive rail will react equally fast as if the relay was on. So let's build that. So again, we have uh, yeah our relay, which is currently now in the off state. We have our input voltage, which is yeah. If I lower it, go relay goes into the oops, on state, and uh, we have our positive rail here. And just for kicks. Uh, I put in, uh, in totally another scale uh, the ripple of our uh, positive rail on another channel. Uh, but the first th uh, thing you notice is uh, if I switch the relay on or the relay off. Wait, I zoom in on that a little bit, or at least I try. Might lose. Sorry, a little bit of resolution, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, the first thing you notice when I'm switching the relay, the ripple doesn't change anymore. Because, as I said, the... Oh! I have to hold that far away. Either now, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Either the current 23 milliamps, let's focus on that, 23 milliamps is flowing through the relay, or if the relay is off, it's flowing through that 1.5k resistor. So yeah, we have now basically a constant load on that rail. Let me zoom in. And maybe focus. Thank you. So that's good. That's now working really fine. And you can also see, yeah, the hysteresis. Very nice. Okay. So now I'm in the off state. Uh, sorry. Now the relay is on and we were concerned about what is if the relay is in the off state. Uh, yeah, in the off state. And now I cut uh, the DC power and we see how fast our positive rail is in fact falling. Yeah, if the relay is in the on state, of course, uh, the voltages, if I switch off the AC supply now, is falling with exactly the same speed. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the uh, state of things now. Uh, uh, I need to order fitting capacitors and um, yeah, um, on second thought. My load resistor here is getting a little bit hot because uh, it's burning about 0 0.6 watts and uh, yeah, that's too much. But anyway, um, As soon as I have the parts, I will start building the whole thing. And until then, bye.